Welcome to The Hidden Truth. We're still pretty new to YouTube and we're looking to expand our channel. If you enjoy our videos, please consider sharing them on social media or other UFO communities. Your support means everything to us. Here are a couple of military-based UFO events that took place in the 1950s. Sorry about the robot voice. For now we are going to do a combination of some human narrator videos and some robot voiced ones. Our long-term goal is to have 100% of our videos, human narrator. We are looking for volunteers. Send us an email if you are interested. 1952. Air Force jet attempts to shoot down a UFO. It was not just a case of sending Air Force planes aloft to get a closer look and film UFOs when possible. Captain Edward Drupel. Chief of the Aerial Phenomena Branch at Air Technical Intelligence Center and former head of the Air Force's Project Blue Book, reported that in one instance in the summer of 1952, an Air Force jet attempted to shoot down one of the flying saucers. On a certain morning, no date is given, a radar scope near a certain Air Force base picked up an unknown target that approached at 700 miles per hour then slowed down to a point northeast of the airfield. Two F-86 Sabre jets were scrambled, but at first were unable to locate the target. The second pilot suddenly spotted what at first he took to be a balloon, but a closer view showed that it was definitely saucer-shaped, like a donut without a hole. He began chasing the object and got as close as 500 yards away when it began to accelerate. When it was at a range of 1,000 yards, the machine gun bullets converge at 1,300 yards. He began firing at the target, but it pulled up into a climb and disappeared in seconds. Ruppelt was given this report by an intelligence officer at the base, who said that he had been ordered to burn all copies, but had saved one. It is fortunate that the pilot lived to tell the story. Others have not been so lucky. General Benjamin Chidlow, former commanding general of Air Defense Command, told researcher Robert Gardner in 1953, we have stacks of reports of flying saucers. We take them seriously. When you consider we have lost many men and planes trying to intercept them. If there is any truth to this statement, then the authorities have perfectly understandable reasons for withholding the facts about UFOs from the public. There are few hints of such disturbing facts in the released Air Force intelligence reports. Many such reports, especially those classified as top secret or higher, remain classified on the grounds that their release would compromise national security. Here is a document that relates to a possible collision with an unidentified object, an emergency cable, sent to the Director of Intelligence at Air Force HQ, dated June 26, 1953. Flying objects were sighted by pilots at approximately 2130 hours, June 24, two jet out of QUONSCT point, had a mid-air collision at 2130 hours June 24, 1953, aircraft fell in flames, 15 miles west of QUONSCT point. American and Eastern Airlines pilots who reported flying object will submit on sighting to Director Intelligence HQ, USAF, and Tech Intelligence Center, Wright Patterson and FB. Whether the collision was due to an interception of a UFO may never be known, but it is evident that the incident caused considerable consternation, and the distribution list for the emergency cable included the CIA, Joint Chiefs of Staff, and the National Security Agency, established in 1952. 1953, Air Force jet disappears while intercepting a UFO. The year was 1953. The place, near Sioux Locks, Michigan, USA. A military jet closed in with a UFO and then appeared to collide with it. 
one of the Air Force's most frightening cases that did involve an apparent collision with an unidentified object took place later in 1953. On the evening of November 23, 1953, an Air Defense Command Ground Control Intercept Controller was alerted by the presence of an unidentified and unscheduled target on his radar scope in the vicinity of Sioux Locks, Michigan. A F 89 c Scorpion jet was immediately scrambled from Kinrissy FB, piloted by Lieutenant Felix Minkley, Jr., and his observer, Lieutenant R. R. Wilson, in the rear seat. The GCI controller vectored toward the F-89 to the target and noted that the UFO changed course as the plane approached at over 500 miles per hour. Nine minutes went by. Gradually, the F-89 closed the gap, and the controller advised the men that the target should now be in sight. Suddenly, the two blips on the GCI radar scope merged into one as if they had collided. For a moment, a single blip remained on the scope, but then disappeared. Marking the position, the controller flashed an emergency message to search and rescue. Possibly Minkla and Wilson had managed to bail out in time. Possibly not. After an all-night tear and sea rescue search, not a trace of wreckage or the missing men was found. A Air Force press release stated tersely, the plane was followed by radar until it merged with an object 70 miles off Kuina Point in Upper Michigan. The incident has never been satisfactorily explained. Resources Above Top Secret, Timothy Good, 1988 My Take This is a terrifying encounter. What happened to that pilot? Did his plane disintegrate? Did he get abducted and never return? We may never know. Please include your thoughts in the comments.